All right, I have noon in the Eastern time zone and it's 11 a.m. here in Austin, Texas, and it is time to start our session. Uh, the session is being recorded and we will be sending a copy of the a link to the recording and a copy of the slides to all registrants today. It is my great pleasure to have you here with us today. And let me advance to the next slide where we're going to be hearing just very shortly from Dr. Donovan Wright, defining the DOD roadmap to digital supremacy by effectively adopting digital transformation. A uh, long title, but a very intriguing topic that I think you will find extremely interesting. Here's the agenda that we'll be following today. Uh, just a little bit about capital and then uh, some session pointers or housekeeping. I'll introduce the presenters and a presenter and we'll get right into the presentation. Following the presentation, we will use a question and answer period or, and I'll explain how to do that in a moment. Uh, I normally will talk at, at point six about upcoming webinars, but we're actually taking a break for the summer, so I'll mention what we're going to be doing in the fall, and then uh, how to get a copy of the recording slides and a certificate of attendance or participation. I always laugh to myself when I do this section because I know looking at the roster of people who are attending that many of you have sat in on many webinars. Some of you are faculty, many of you are students, and uh, many of you are alumni. And so you're intimately familiar with our institution. But in the event that there's one or two people out there that are not, uh, let me just share a little bit. Capital was established in 1927, and we're preparing for our 100th anniversary in um, uh, 2027, it's gonna, it's approaching very rapidly. But when you consider that we're one of the oldest tech related universities in the country, uh, we've been at this for a long, long time, dedicated to STEM based and high tech academic programs. We offer degrees all the way from the associate up to the doctoral level. And our speaker today has earned doctorate from Capital. We're nonprofit, private, and accredited. Each of those are valuable and important terms, but I do want to hone in on the accredited part. Uh, we're accredited by the Middle States Commission on Higher Education, which is regional accreditation, the highest level of accreditation available to any college or university in the United States, and also uh, recognized and approved by the state of Maryland where the university is located. Uh, we actually offer a wide variety of of degrees related to this topic, all the way from the bachelor's to doctoral programs. If you are interested in this topic in terms of earning a degree or a certificate, um, feel free to visit captechu.edu slash fields of study and uh, you get a little more information on what we offer. We also offer master's and doctoral information sessions, which are free. There's no cost to attend um, and uh, learn more about it. There's one uh, for the master's that's coming up next Wednesday, a week from yesterday, and one for the doctoral program, which is coming in a week and a half. And if you're interested in those, you can learn more on our website or by calling or, or emailing. Now with that, a little bit of housekeeping and then we'll get right into the presentation. Um, we are recording the session, by the way. I do want to mention that and we'll for, uh, be uh, giving you a link to the recording uh, in, via an email. We will answer questions at the conclusion of the presentation. And for those of you that have joined us before, you know that at any time you can post a question into the text chat. Uh, we will review those questions and answer as many as we can at the end of the presentation. We're not uh, activating microphones or webcams for participants today. So it is the text chat that you need to use to reach out to us. A link to the recording and to the slides, as I will mention, will be sent to everybody. A participation certificate is available by request, and we'll tell you how to get that at the end of the session. That's available, by the way, to both those of you joining us in the live session and the many hundreds of people who watch it on demand. Now, let me introduce our speaker so that we can get into the heart of the program today. Dr. Donovan Wright is a adjunct professor at Capital. He's a data scientist in his full-time work with Paraton, a leading security and technical company, a technology company based in Reston, Virginia. In that role, he conducts in-depth data analysis using data mining and modeling, natural language processes, and machine learning. Uh, he has also been a senior cyber and artificial intelligence consultant at Fort Meade, which is the U.S. Army's cyber command post. A 24-year veteran of the U.S. Army, and thank you for your service, Dr. Wright. 
Uh, he has served as a cybersecurity information and communication system manager in postings in the US and in Germany. As I mentioned, he's an adjunct professor at Capital, and, but he's also a professor of practice in cyber and related areas for Vaughn, um, Vaughn College of Aeronautics and Technology. Wright earned a PhD in artificial intelligence from Capital, uh, um, Doctor of Education in Instructional Technology and Distance Education from Nova Southeastern University, a Master of Science degree in cyber ma Cybersecurity Management and Policy from the University of Maryland University College, and holds certificates in information systems and cybersecurity management from the US Cyber Center of Excellence and also from the University of Maryland. And I've included his LinkedIn if you wanna continue conversation with him afterwards. But with that, we're gonna go ahead and get right into the session. So I give control over to uh, our good doctor who will take it away. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gibbs. Can everybody hear me? Okay, so we can. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you again for your warm introduction, and thank you for those of you who have um, joined us today to participate. Um, could go to the next slide. So the bottom line today is we're going to talk about digital transformation and the importance of digital transformation. Um, throughout industry and academia across the, the world. But in particular, um, it's important to the Department of Defense, um, of which, um, as Mr. Gibbs said, I'm currently working as a consultant. And the bluff is um, digital transformation is um, considered as the fourth industrial revolution um, by um, many, um, it looks at um, mobile technology, internet of things, robotics, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, big data, and real-time analytics, digital twin, and API-based integration, robotic processes, and cloud. And as we talk about cloud, um, we look at the aspect of the idea that basically the world is going um, to what is called everything as a service. Um, everything as a service basically defines um, the idea that we will be able in the future to get everything we need from the cloud. Um, platform as a service, software as a service, um, infrastructure as a service, and not only that, but we'll be able to get um, capabilities, um, AI-based and whatever the eaches are from the cloud based as a service. Next slide. There are barriers, as we know, um, as we look at um, digital transformation across the world. And, um, you know, at, as we look at it from the perspective of our foxholes or wherever we are in terms of our ecosystem within industry. Um, these, um, these barriers I see um, tend to fall within um, the flavor of people, process, data, and technology. Um, we all know that as we delve into digital transformation, we have to have the right skill set, the right people with the knowledge, skills, and ability to adapt and push forward these technological approaches and capabilities. We have to shift and change culture under the people aspect of it, because um, as we move towards digitalness, um, what occurs is a shift in culture and a shift in how we are normally doing business. Um, then we look at the process pieces. We realize that governance is a key part of um, that process where we have to put governance in place where that governance defines the infrastructure, the processes, the standards, the strategy that we're going to use to implement and push forward um, whatever technology it is we're going to 
um, push forward for our organizations. Then we look at the data. Um, the data portion of it is data is significantly important as we deal with technology because data, um, in my view, is more so like the gasoline for um, fueling the vehicles. Let's let's use the analogy of cars and moving around. We need gasoline to, to, to make sure that those cars are fueled to move. Data is a significant piece of that aspect. And we have to get data right, um, especially in large organizations. We have to look at the, the idea of most organization, much like DOD, is accustomed to um, database operations. Now, if we're going to look at data as a fuel for um, channeling and, and being the fuel for um, digital transformation within our organizations, we're going to look at the aspect of um, an enterprise approach to data. So data governance is the way to go to get at enterprise. Um, and then when we look at the PPTDE, so the people, the process, the data and the technology, um, then we look at the idea that um, change will um, be eminent in terms of um, our transformational um, goals and what we aim to achieve. Next slide. And here we look at um, the idea of um, digital transformation being uh, a stool and then those four um, people, process, technology, and data being the, the, the legs of those tools that support it and um, ensure that at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, we are able to yeah. at the end of the day, um, we're able to um, effectively um, utilize it because of, of digital transformation um, to get at um, moving our organizations from um, um, analog in, in a lot of cases or manual processes to more efficient, um, automated, and then get towards autonomy where um, we've moved from automation to autonomy in the respect that um, in under the, 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 the foundation of our digitalness, um, we have uh, AI and, and such te technologies that will be doing stuff in the background and providing us in information. Um, Let's look at it in terms of your car. You're driving your car and um, you don't have to get up every day and go under the hood to check to see what are your levels. You have a system, you know, automated and uh, autonomously working through the dynamics and providing you information as required. Next slide. We look at the idea of, um, let's look at what occurred in Ukraine. As the Russians came in and um, they were able to um, basically dis destroy the, the um, mechanisms for the Ukrainians to have internet or have um, access to the, the global um, cyberspace, Starlink was able to go in and become you know, a part of that mechanism that was broken and torn apart. Um, this is what I would say is a very good example of um, how digital transformation and using the digital capabilities available, satellites, 5G and all of that will enable us as we move forward. Next slide. So let's start off with how the DOD basically started looking at prioritizing what is required for um, digital transformation, which is a key part of um, our digital supremacy and keeping us on the cutting edge and being um, giving us that advantage over our adversaries across the world as we move forward. Um, this is basically defined by the National Defense Strategy. 
and the priorities that are defined within that strategy is basically the foundation by which the DOD um, from this national defense strategy have defined what are key and critical things um, from the digital side to you know, prioritize um, as we move forward into um, the idea of getting towards effective digital transformation. Next slide. So one of the things that started off um, in FY19 to um, FY23 um, is digital modernization. And digital modernization basically as we look at it is um, prioritizing, um, taking the whole um, an old infrastructure and um, breaking it down where we're able to get in there and um, modernize in preparation for digital transformation because sometimes that old infrastructure is not able to um, be a, adopted to use um, these new cutting edge technologies that enable us and give us the capabilities we need. Um, so the priorities were cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, cloud, and then um, creating an environment where we had command and control under a digital um, type of structure. Next slide. We then ask ourselves throughout the years, we've, we've seen where, um, like I said, we've, we've gone through and we're, we're pushing and we're getting at digital modernization. Um, what I haven't seen from DOD to date is a digital transformation strategy. And I pose this to um, the audience at large today. Is this something that we need to sit down and look at and put together that strategy for digital transformation, which I think is very critical. Um, a strategy not only defines a roadmap, but it also defines um, the resourcing and, and all of the required, necessary required framework that needs to be put in place to effectively posture um, where we need to go. Next slide. So the Army um, last CIO um, basically aligned his thought process with what I was thinking and what I posed to the audience at large today, wherein the, the Army actually in, put, it, put to in place an Army digital transformation strategy. And I think um, this pushed the Army um, to a mindset and a thinking where um, they were effectively putting together the key um, attributes that are necessary to get us, um, get them towards um, effective digital transformation, which is critical across the board. Next slide. These are just um, tips. Um, for successful digital transformation. And you see here, I'll just highlight a couple of them. Um, researching and, and identifying the critical digital transformation cap technology, technological capabilities you require for your um, organization is, is very critical, right? Because um, identifying them then uh, and researching them basically puts you in a position where you could effectively define the people, the process, um, the technology and the data to, to, to get at um, your digital transformation for your individual organization. Um, senior management buy-in and um, you know, sharing those research and what is identified by those research is critical so that they understand because um, let's face it, a lot of our organizations as we see it today, a lot of our leaders do not understand um, what are the key principles or the key framework that we need to really hone in on in terms of um, our approach to digital transformation. Um, it says here, choosing the right technologies that align with the actual business priorities. 
um, or operational priorities as we look at um, DOD. Next slide. One of the key pieces of digital transformation, as, as I earlier spoke about the idea that um, we're getting to um, a, um, an ecosystem where um, everything will be as a service based on a cloud offering type um, effort. Um, cloud strategy is a key piece and DOD implemented um, their cloud strategy in 2018 um, with the idea of um, making available a cloud environment that is able to, um, you know, be postured for software as a service, platform as a service, and eventually um, get into that full idea of infrastructure as a service, then capabilities as a service that would be pushed out to all um, those within that ecosystem so that DOD can um, effectively have the, the um, digital transformation type technologies available through a cloud available access um, for all stakeholders to use. Next slide. And like I said, um, the key, the key, um, key, um, what we're key um, and used to as we talk about cloud services is software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. But then as we move forward, we're realizing that um, we're now pushing forward this new agenda of everything as a service, where we have, we'll have. Um, cybersecurity as a service. We'll have artificial intelligence as a service. All of these things as a service, instead of having them on um, fixed type, um, you know, environments within our own organizations. These are cloud-based um, industry, best quality type um, capabilities that would be readily available for us to use to get at um, an effective way of digital transformation for the Department of Defense. Next slide. And here are some other um, examples of the other service process um, uh, listed, listed here, um, where, like I said, it's not we're like you're gonna have your on-premise data centers with, with, with all of your capabilities there you will have the best of the best in terms of industries, best practices, and industry leaders, um, the Googles, um, the Microsoft. Um, as we we all know today, we're um, using Microsoft 365. Um, that's been pushed to us as a service um, uh, from the as a service um, type capabilities, which makes it more effective and easier to access for all our stakeholders to use. Next slide. The DOD cyber strategy, um, which was um, the, the newest version in 2023 and the cyber strategy, because without the cyber strategy and the cyber security aspect or the defensive cyber operations, of cyber, because as we dig deeper into um, digital transformation, one of the key things we'll have to make sure is how do we secure um, all of our cyberspace assets, all of our cyber cyberspace capabilities, and maximize on that security so that um, these um, capabilities are always up and running and functioning, so that we are always um, ready and um, postured for um, the best of um, effectiveness in terms of our operational and um, mission requirements. Next slide. And these are just key highlights um, from the cyber strategy, um, much of which I highlighted before. Um, it doesn't make sense to have all of these technologies and capabilities that will um, give us that edge. Um, automate processes, 
um, create autonomy where we use data and we have um, real-time um, dashboards to provide information um, as we require them um, real-time um, if we don't protect that cyber environment we don't do a um, have a, a postured cyber and effective cyber um, strategy and a cyber operational approach um, to protect that environment to ensure that all those capabilities are readily available whenever we need them. Next slide. Now, the joint cyber warfighting architecture is a part of um, what the U.S. Cyber Command is using as their ecosystem as they um, get at digital transformation for the cyber ecosystem. And this platform now is an enterprise platform that has data, um, has um, tools and capabilities um, within that environment to enable that community to make sure that when we're getting at cyber and the, the protection of cyberspace, we're doing it in the most, the most effective and most meaningful approaches and using the best of the best capabilities from um, technology as we, we move across the board to, to ensure that we protect cyberspace and protect um, and enable the capabilities that we need so that we have that digital transformative edge on our adversity. adversity. Um, next slide. These are just um, seven AI-driven cybersecurity companies. And when I say AI-driven, so there is a term, um, uh, it's either autonomous cybersecurity or AI cybersecurity. These are some of the companies that are currently um, putting together um, best practices and best type capabilities to enable um, the, the cyber um, security communities or um, defensive cyber communities in terms of how we approach and how we get at um, cyber security um, within the DOD ecosystem, um, not depending solely on um, a man or humans, but we're, the, we're, we're, we're using um, AI type capabilities um, to enhance and enable and give us that cutting edge. Next slide. These are um, a, a couple of, of uh, another four companies that are in that space that are currently doing, um, you know, best practice type um, AI um, cybersecurity type capabilities. Um, to en enable and enhance the, the ecosystem and the professionals within that ecosystem so that we could get at um, that big data and that big analy analysis um, for um, cybersecurity data so that we could make better decisions and protect th that ecosystem um, as most effective as possible. Next slide. We get at the DOD data strategy, um, which basically says all DOD entities need to realize that um, data is not an individual or an organizational um, asset. Basically, um, we must, based on the strategy, we, we have to realize that um, the data strategy is telling us that um, data must be looked at in, in the perspective of um, being an asset for DOD at large. Um, there's large data sets, and as we move data into an enterprise ecosystem, so all of these individual stake stakeholders, be it cybersecurity, be it um, logistics, um, you name it, um, as they look at the data for their ecosystem in an enterprise type um, environment, so that when we look at data, we're looking at data um, holistically in an in a, in a, in a enterprise type mindset where um, it's not individual um, and we're able to look at the big picture so that we could, leaders could make better decisions. Um, the guiding principles on the, 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 the initial strategy says um, 
data is a strategic asset. Like I said before, it's not individual. It's not. It's not an organization asset. It's a DOD asset. Um, data, um, collective data stewardship. What that is saying is, under the premise of data governance, you have um, an environment uh, created where it, it is a, a huge ecosystem with a body of data stewards, um, chief data officers, and data um, type professionals that are there and they um, enabling um, DOD to look at big data and and um, not look at it in, in, in terms of siloed and, and a database approach, but a data ops approach where um, through data governance and data management, we're able to use and analyze that big data so that we get at the, the broad decision points, um, looking at it holistically for um, the DOD as an ecosystem. Then applying artificial intelligence um, so that um, we're not you know, humans are the key focus of doing the analysis of this data, but we're using AI type um, algorithms to get into that big data and paint that big picture, which is very important for us um, to, to, to um, you know, paint that big picture for our ecosystem so that leaders could make not siloed approach decisions, but a decision point coming to them that um, looks you know, across all of the, the these individual ecosystems and give you a better decision point. Next slide. So one of the key, um, as it says here, the four essential capabilities necessary to enable um, us in terms of data is architecture. So um, as we move from um, individual siloed approach to looking at data. We're looking at data from an enterprise ecosystem. So we're gonna need to have data pipelines and piping the data to um, you know, enterprise type repositories where we could sit, we could look at data um, holistically and look at data, um, that big data to make decision points. Standards, um, so a standard approach to um, how we tag, how we um, store, and how we process data throughout our ecosystem. Then governance, which is a key piece, um, the data governance approach where we have a, a body that defines these standards, this approach, defines the ecosystem. And then key to that is um, changing the, the paradigm and, and how we look culturally at data um, as an organization where we bring in the right talent, we bring in the data scientist, the data analyst, we bring in the data engineer, um, all these um, key type professionals who are um, equipped and have the knowledge, skills, and ability to look at data from um, data ops and not a database approach, um, um, encouraging and um, pushing us to um, get at that enterprise data um, look for um, and data ecosystem for the DOD. And the seven goals, um, make data visible, make data accessible, make data understandable, um, make data linked, make data trustworthy, make data interoperable, and make data secure. Those seven things are key and critical, and we could only achieve those if we look at data um, on the, the premise of uh, data governance, where we have that, that enterprise type ecosystem um, development implemented with the infrastructure, the, the people, process, um, technology, and, data, and, and have data standards and everything in, in focus to get us at um, our goals um, as we look at data. Um, as a key decision points for leaders throughout DOD. Next slide. Then there's a DOD artificial intelligence strategy, um, which basically puts us into a, a position where um, we're gonna make the best and do the best with um, effectively adapting, adapting and implementing AI as a part of 
um, our automation and our autonomy process that will make DOD that much more effective as we look at data, as we look at logistics, as we look at cybersecurity, as we look at intelligence. These, all of these key areas will benefit um, exponentially based on the idea that we're gonna not only uh, um, have humans in the mix, because we'll always have humans in the mix, but, um, and that's basically how I foresee it, um, but we have the AI um, capability there um, that will give us that um, speed, efficiency, and give us that, that ability to maximize um, as we build the ecosystem um, with data and um, the processes that will get us to um, digital supremacy as uh, um, the VOD moves forward. Next slide. And this basically is like, like it says here, um, rapidly deliver AI enabled capabilities um, to address autonomy and automation for the DOD. Now, a lot of folks, uh, leaders, when I talk to leaders throughout DOD today, um, their concern is as we posture and implement and develop and bring in more AI type capabilities, um, there'll be less um, requirements for um, humans in the workforce. And I would say that is not a true statement. Um, as we all know, especially, let's talk from the standpoint of the cybersecurity um, community. Um, we're lacking a great number of um, personnel. AI and um, data and getting that digital transformation will get us um, to be able to effectively use the number of folks we have currently in the workforce to get at um, all of the, the mission set and all of our um, processes and, and make it much more effective um, as we move forward. Next slide. Recently, the, the DOD uh, AI strategy was, at, um, there was an advancement to the strategy um, where the Department of Defense is now looking at it as a data analytics and artificial intelligence adoption strategy. What we're saying here is um, data is, is, is the fuel um, as we move forward. Data is gonna be um, key and critical um, from an enterprise perspective for leaders to get at um, making decisions for DOD at large and not making decisions for DOD um, in, with the idea of how we've, we've normally done it in silo approaches. Um, you can have um, 10 stakeholders um, within, a, within an ecosystem looking at um, their data and making decisions for an enterprise or DOD at large based on their, their individual um, areas. We have to get at enterprise data. Um, analytics is going to be critical and then artificial intelligence where we automate and where we get at um, effectively doing the analytics um, and the data governance process using AI um, is going to be critical. Next slide. And this basically um, breaks down um, where we have AI as, as the, the enabler and um, the key, key deliver capabilities that are going to um, for enterprise business and joint um, war fighting or operational impacts, advanced data analytics and the AI ecosystems, which we're currently doing. So most of um, the organizations, say um, intelligence and um, cybersecurity ecosystems are um, currently pushing and adopting their um, data platforms and an analytics platforms, platforms for, for um, their eco individual ecosystems. Next slide. The Chief Digital Artificial Intelligence Office 
um, which is um, currently under um, reporting directly to the deputy sec def, um, is championing or the proponency for the data analytics and artificial intelligence um, portion. And I see this further being, being um, the proponency that's going to be looking at digital transformation across the board uh, for the DOD. Um, their responsibility is to ensure that um, we have, the, by, based on partnership with industry and academia, we're bringing in the right um, the people and we're looking at the right processes, the right technology, and then um, getting data right for um, the DOD at large. Next slide. I tend, I wanted to just emphasize these two differences because I think sometimes um, I, I, I'm gonna, you know, put my IG hat on and um, we push the terminology responsible artificial intelligence. Um, and I think as an organization and as we move um, forward into digital transformation and um, the implementation and development of AI type capabilities, we must emphasize much like um, the US government is realizing now on the idea that um, yes, um, responsible artificial intelligence is key and critical and it's good, but we must get at um, the governance aspect where ethical artificial intelligence is priority and paramount because um, only through ethical AI can we define um, the a true roadmap where we're you know addressing and using principles that are um, very key and critical to um, an ethical approach to how we um, not only um, develop but how we implement and how we use artificial intelligence across the Department of Defense. Next slide. We ask the question again, and I'll ask this, I'll pose this to um, the audience at large. Um, we, have a, an, an, um, we have an AI strategy, we have a cloud strategy, we have a cybersecurity strategy. Do you all think, and I believe strongly that um, we should have a quantum strategy and we should be embracing um, quantum computing um, uh, as a strategy as we move forward um, at implementing effective digital transformation. And why I say this is the idea that as we delve deeper into um, the digital transformative technologies across the board, AI, um, and other type technologies. Quantum computing, I believe, will be basically key to that um, compute infrastructure that we're gonna need to get at um, implementing and developing and um, you know pushing forth that e digital transformation ecosystem with, a, with the best infrastructure to get us, get us at um, what we need in terms of um, effectiveness and um, the right infrastructure to um, engage with those cap capabilities to maximize on what they bring to the table. Next slide. And this um, piece of, of news article basically just outlines, you know, there in the Department of Defense and throughout industry and academia, there's a lot of investments being made. Um, I just think that um, we need to invest more and we need to push um, this. And um, as we all know, with, without having a strategy um, as a foundation for building out the plan and how we move forward to get at um, capabilities we require, um, it is important that we get at a, a quantum computing strategy or a quantum strategy for the Department of Defense. Next slide. These are just um, organizations that are and um, 
put in place to um, push the, that quantum agenda. Um, and um, here we see where there's an approach to a quantum policy. Um, I say again, I believe highly that, that the DOD should have a quantum computing or a quantum um, strategy put in place to get us um, to where we, um, we could effectively implement all of the digital transformation capabilities and technologies that we're um, proposing to bring in. Next slide. And this basically, um, as I, as we, as I um, highlighted before, as we look at um, classical computing versus quantum computing, um, the differences and um, what we aim to gain by having the best compute infrastructure available for DOD. Next slide. And these are companies currently, because like I said before, um, before in the, in the, in the um, when I started, as a service is a key piece. And now we have, these are 13 companies that are looking at um, and currently um, providing quantum computing as a service for um, entities and organizations across the board. Next slide. These are um, another um, number of companies of the 13 and um, there are currently more being put in place. Um, next slide. So um, I'm gonna pose some other questions um, to the audience and those within DOD as we as practitioners and we as practitioners who understand the need for digital transformation. Um, these are questions I would like you to um, as take away and as you um, go about your daily business throughout DOD um, and in academia and industry as it applies. Um, these are things we need to look at. Um, how do we get um, to digital transformation? How do we get our organizations to digital transformation so that we could effectively use the, the, the strength and um, the effectiveness and efficiency of um, these digital transformation technologies to enable our environments. Next slide. The bluff again, um, we will not be able to do or get our organizations um, to effective digital transformation unless we address the barriers of people, process, technology, and data. Um, long, I would say gone are the days when we could just sit by and say, um, that's not how um, we've done it normally and how we've done it normally won't cut it, um, won't get us to the supremacy in digital transformation required to be um, a game changer within um, the DOD or a game changer within the world as we posture to use technology to enable us and to get us forward. Um, change will only come um, within our organizations if we address the people portion. Um, we change the culture. If we hire um, and we promote the, the right knowledge, people with the right knowledge, skills, and ability to address the skill set required to um, get at using the, these technologies that we're bringing in. The, the process, when we address the process uh, and the strategy and the policies and the procedures, these are critical steps um, as we move forward. Then um, partnering with academia and industry to pinpoint the right technology and not just the right technology, the technologies you need to offset um, your requirements to get at um, your problem set within your organization. And then um, last but not least, which is I think is significantly important, we have to get at data. We have to get at data governance and data operations, and we have to get at data management. We have to have the right infrastructure. We have to build the right data ecosystem, enterprise ecosystem to support and fuel um, digital transformation for our organizations. Next slide. What are your questions? 
All right. Well, thank you, doctor. I appreciate your remarks. And it's very interesting when you consider the, um, to a degree, the life and death importance of what you're talking about because of the future of cyber warfare and everything else that's involved. Now, there have been quite a few questions that have come in, some comments as well. I'm going to just start at the top, and some of these are only comments, but I think they're important to mention. And we have about um, five to seven minutes that we can deal with this. So I think part of the, Elizabeth says, I think part of the strategy is to build a data-centric network. Uh, and then Paul says, a DOD digital transformation strategy is necessary to provide the ba basis um, of the requirements that are crucial to deal with spectrum dominance and new weapon systems. Um, that term spec spectrum dominance is a new term to me. I'm not quite really familiar with that. So you may want to uh, expand a little bit on that. And also uh, he uses the word asymmetric warfare um, and perhaps uh, discuss that. So I'm going to stop there and, and ask if you could maybe make a comment about those two, if, if these are in your areas of expertise. If not, we'll maybe have Paul explain it a little better. But spectrum dominance, asymmetric warfare. So, so bottom line is um, those two areas are key and significant um, as we look at the, the idea of, um, like you said, not just cybersecurity, but um, as we look at cyberspace, um, one of the key elements of dominating um, the war fighting or the war fighting domain for the DOD is gonna be cyberspace operations, which is um, you know, getting at um, using cyber as an um, attack vector for um, key entities or key significant um, platforms within um, that warfare domain that will enable us as um, the DOD. The, the, the thing is, um, is, the points are spot on. Um, unless we build and implement the right platforms to um, push and, um, you know, promulgate um, our dominance in cyberspace because um, cyberspace is key to um, all of these key entities. If it's if it's here, um, dominance, um, the, the, our airways are um, going to be um, basically dominated by um, autonomous systems like drones and all of that. How we get at, um, you know, targeting those systems and making sure that we are dominating that sphere, um, digital transformation is going to be critical. Um, the, the same to do with, with, with maritime systems. Um, all of our ship and um, those entities or the ships or drone type systems within the maritime arena is also gonna be systems that are gonna be critical um, as we use cyberspace type operations to you know, capitalize our capabilities and our, our dominance within that, 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 that um, sphere of, of, of warfare. Cyberspace is gonna be the, the new tip of the spear and cyber operations is gonna be critical and the only way we're going to be able to get at that is to digital transformation, supremacy, and dominance. I see we're rapidly running out of time. So I'm going to skip a few of these comments and go directly to a question. Moerio asks this question, uh, what certification should I study for if I want to work with AI and AI counterintelligence? Um, and I guess this is a little bit outside the scope of the, of the discussion but it might be something that you, you have a comment on. So um, what I would say to him is um, there are a lot of AI type certifications, Google, um, there are um, universities that have um, graduate type certificates in AI. Um, so if you do a Google search and you look at Google, IBM, um, Meta, all of those organizations that you're familiar with um, on Coursera, they have a lot of certifications that you could dig into and get yourself um, educated and get yourself 
the skills you require to um, be a productive professional within um, the AI type um, professional ecosystem. Um, on LinkedIn, there are also um, LinkedIn type certification training for um, AI type, digital transformation type um, professional certifications that you could also participate in. If I hope I have answered your question. You have, and uh, I want to give a shout out to Andrew. Andrew, could you repost your comment? You put it to the hosts and panelists, which then, of course, uh, I can see and the doctor can see, but um, Moeria won't be able to see. So if you could repost your comments about CompTIA, um, that would be helpful to him, perhaps. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to take just one final question. Um, Let's see here. There's so, wow, a lot of things have come in. Uh, Andrew, thank you for doing that. All right. Um, Jonathan mentions DOD zero trust um, addressing, hmm, how are we renaming it? Can you read that question from Jonathan Washington here? I'm. It says DOD zero trust address the underpending of managing onboarding systems to upgrade legacy system. I'm not quite sure I follow that now that I've read it out loud, but perhaps you have a comment on it. Uh, I'm not able to, let me let me go in there so I can see the question. Could you read it back to me? Sure. Jonathan Washington asks this, DOD Zero Trust addresses the underpending of managing onboarding system to upgrade legacy system. I'm not quite sure I follow that phrase. Why are we naming this as effort as digital services? Um, why not discuss this digital service idea within the footprint of zero trust? So the, his really question is uh, the comparison and contrasting of digital services versus zero trust, which has been something of course, that's been part of, of cyber for a long time. Okay. So, so digital services, I look at um, digital services as um, potentially something that could go under the portfolio of um, the as a service type capability. So um, zero trust is the ability for us to get at securing these digital type platforms as we bring them into um, the DOD, um, the Doden um, environment. So, um, as we look at these the, the digital services, um, I think it is it is um, I would say it's 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 okay for us to um, speak of digital services because um, as we dig more into and get more involved into as a service and not have um, these digital type services within um, our data centers or um, within our environment but getting them as a service, um, it, is, it, is, it's, it is important. So um, separating the two is important um, in my view. Thank you. I'm gonna uh, end with this comment from Dr. Uh, Najam Hassan, who is on our faculty. He says, uh, in response to the training question, we have a Bachelor of Science in AI, which is the first in Maryland, and a Master of Science in CS with AI and DS track. We hope to start a certificate in AI program soon. So um, I encourage you to check that out because there's some very valuable training and education that, that we offer right here uh, in uh, through Capital. With that, uh, uh, speaking of Capital, let's go on and uh, wrap up the session. I'm looking at the time. We have just two minutes, which is just about right. Uh, we're taking a break for the summer. We will not have any sessions in July or August, but we will be back in September. In the meanwhile, you can view all of our webinars on demand that we've had through the last couple of years, in fact. And uh, also on that same page, you'll find an excellent resource in all of the CapTech Cap Tech podcasts, which are hosted by our own uh, Dr. Uh, Brad Sims, the president of the university. I think you'll find some very interesting information on those podcasts. I encourage you to check those out and be watching for uh, emails about the upcoming season uh, in August. Uh, we'll start in September. Links to the slides and the recording will be sent to everybody who's registered. Watch for that email. A certificate of completion is available upon request. When you get the email, just 
reply back to it that with the name that you want on the certificate. This is good for both those who viewed the uh, live session today and also for the many uh, that will view it on demand over the weeks ahead. All you need to do is respond to the email that you have uh, either viewed it live or on demand, and we'll be happy to send you a certificate of attendance, uh, which is uh, worth 1.0 CEUs. With that, I want to thank our presenter. Uh, this has been very intriguing. Um, I think uh, the average citizen of the United States uh, is well aware of the Department of Defense and the work that the armed services do, but much less aware of the cyber world and everything that's circulating around um, the uh, information technology and the importance of protecting not only our nation's secrets, but uh, being able to um, defensively and offensively prepare for the ongoing war that's already occurring um, in cyber warfare, as we already know. Uh, with that, I want to thank our presenter again. Again, I see many more questions. Uh, we'll just have to put a, a stop to those, I guess. Now, I do want to mention that um, when I send out my email, I will include uh, Dr. Wright's LinkedIn address, and I would encourage you to follow him and to initiate conversations through LinkedIn with him. I'm sure he will be happy to do that. So thank you again, everyone everybody for joining us and I special thanks um, to um, our presenter uh, for this very intriguing and interesting discussion today. With that, we will go ahead and wrap up and uh, look for that email from me, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everybody.